Hey guys, it's Waka here. Um, long time no video, but I just wanted to make a quick video to do a little unboxing of my new Magic the Gathering Dungeons and Dragons crossover. And uh, many of you already know that I am a big, big, big fan of Magic the Gathering. So let's get, dive right into it and open this 10 draft booster box. So I'm just tearing off the plastic around the box and I'll show you the back um, and what it has inside. So you have the um, card, shiny, 20 traditional foil and lands, um, three oversized dungeon cards, which is a new feature in um, this set. Um, I've never seen dungeon cards in a Magic the Gathering set before. Uh, do you get 10 15 card adventure in the Forgotten Realms booster packs? Obviously, and you get the card box as well, which is this, and then you also get the special oversized D20 and reference cards. So let's open it up. So, wow, so you can already see like. They have the dungeon cards, so we'll open that as well in just a moment. So the first one is Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Um, so you can see you have the Mad Wizard's layer. Draw three cards and reveal them you made. Cast one of them without paying its mana cost. Uh, and deep mines, ruined cavern, Muriel's graveyard, lost level. It tells you under each heading what you have to do. Like create a treasure token, for example. Um, target creature can't attack until your next turn. Uh, dungeon level, scry one, you want to So you start from the top down, as the arrows suggest, and work your way. And then you have this one. Then you have um, lost mine of Fandelver. Again, working down each box and following its instruction. And then Tomb of Annihilation is our third card. And then this is kind of cool, like how you enter the dungeon, you lose a life. And then you kind of follow the, follow it all the way down. So that's the three cards. And then, I don't know what this is. This is probably just an empty box. Um, before we open this one, this is something that was in the box as well. Um, Adventures in the Forgotten Realm artwork. And um, kind of like a promo, promo card leaflet type thing. We'll put that here. Now onto the main boxing. So this is the box. Da -da -da -da. So you can see there's the oversized D20 dice. Really nice, which is something that I really like. Put that here. And then you have the two reference cards that they were saying. Just something like how to play and stuff. Just all right. And then you have the basic lands and the shiny card and this is the treasure chest card i like what it says on it here which is well sacrifice treasure chest roll a d20 so you pay four mana for that then for one if you get one you get trapped and you lose three life if you get numbers between two and nine on the dice you create five treasure tokens and if you get 10 to 19, you gain three life and draw three cards. I don't know if you can see it in the light. I'll show you in a minute. And then 20, if you get a D20, you search your library for a card. And if it's an artifact card, you may put it into your battlefield. Um, otherwise, you put that card in your hand and shuffle. So we'll open that in a bit. Uh, now let's start opening our 
boosters haha <laughs> nice so you have this is what it looks like which is kind of cool so yeah they're all the same cover art so yeah and we'll open them one by one so first one Circle of the Moon Droid, Green Mana card, um, Thieves Tools, Artifact card, Potion of Healing, uh, White Mana card, Secret Door, which is an Artifact card, like a Defender, so it's just used for defense. Um, you have the Jade Cell Sword, um, Compelled Duelist. And then you have Hobgoblin Captain, a red mana card. And then you see a guard approach. So kind of like the D&D style of, you know, you see someone coming or an enemy is ahead. So you can distract them or hide. Um, and that's like an instant card. Uh, another creature card for blue mana, which is the Rhyme Shield Fro Frost Giant. This, I feel like it's from Realm of the Frost Maiden, probably because of the name. Um, and then it got kick in the door, red mana card, cleric glass, uh, which are three different levels that you can play it in. Um, it's an enchantment. Uh, you have another blue mana card, which is a sorcery, uh, and a red dragon, which is typical of D&D uh, games. And it's pretty cool, the artwork. Um, it's a 4-4 four, four creature card. Treasure Vault is another one. Is a artifact land. And then you have a basic land card, uh, which you get in any booster anyway. This is quite interesting as well, which you don't normally get in a booster, but you do in this. Uh, is the Dungeon of the Mad Mage, uh, which is what we already saw with our big one, the big card. And that's part of this booster. Booster number two, we have Sepulchre Ghost, which is a black mana zombie creature. Um, we have a plus two mace, which is an artifact. Looks pretty cool. You can attach it to a creature to give it plus two. Plus two. Um, we have a, another D&D styled blue mana card in which it says roll a d20. If you get between one to nine, you draw two cards. If you draw between 10 to 19, then you scry two. You take the two cards on top of your deck and then draw two cards um, and if you get a d20 uh, you scry three and then you draw three cards which is kind of cool very dandy like um, boots of speed which you use as an artifact but costs red mana um, again another dandy style card with these um, rolling variances so you roll a d20 and you can gain life according to what number you roll. And you have Grim Bounty, which is a black mana card. And in this one, you can destroy target creature or planeswalker. And put a treasure token. Uh, Ginny Windseer is a blue mana gin creature flying card. Again, another D&D style text. Um, this is another improvised weaponry card. It is a sorcery, it looks pretty cool. And it deals two damage to any target. And you create a treasure token. Um, then you have Hoarding Ogre, which is another red mana card. That's a creature card. 
and um, another normal creature goblin with haste, red mana. This is a, a really cool one, very D&D-like. Demogorgon's Clutches, which is a black sorcery card. It is, uh, says that target opponents discards two cards, mills two cards and loses two life. So it says to mill a card, a player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, then you have the Bag of Holding, very, very common in D&D games. Um, it's a specific D&D um, item that they use in the RPG game. Uh, whenever you discard a card, exile that card from your graveyard, um, or you can pay two and tap it to draw a card and discard a card. Or you can pay four and sacrifice the Bag of Holding, return all cards exiled with the Bag of Holding to their owner's hand. Nice. Um, again, D&D style Paladin class, which is a class in actual D&D games. Again, three levels. You can choose to pay the mana and use its abilities. The following green card is a, a shiny card, a holographic green card. It's an instant and um, it has an option to choose one of the following. Two weapon fighting double target creatures power and toughness until end of turn or archery this spell deals five damage to target creature with flying very nice again land card and a token card that's booster number two booster number three if i can open it is the first one is a compelled duel target creature gets plus three plus three and must be blocked this turn which is interesting and i'll put that here and deadly dispute is another one another black mana card instant um dwarf hold champion is a white mana card and is a creature Another blue mana card is Clever Conjurer, which is a creature card, a gnome wizard, and it has Mage Hand, which is another D&D specific terminology. Um, Dragon's Fire is an instant, very much D&D like as well. Um, and it's pretty cool looking as well. You can see the, the dragon there. Great Axe is another artifact creature, so you can equip it to your creature and it gets plus four plus zero, but the equipment cost is five, so probably use it in a later part of your game. This is a very interesting card, um, not like your average card, but um, it's Neverwinter Dryad. And um, it says, Sacrifice Neverwinter Dryad, search your library for a basic forest card, put it into the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle. So that's interesting. Very um, 80s looking, if I say. Uh, then Null Hunter is a creature for green mana. Um, it's a plus two, plus two. Another black mana card, creature card. Um, with Death Touch, which is interesting. Then we have Displacer Beast, which is a creature cat beast um, with three and two defense. The next card is an artifact card. It's a white mana portable hole. And when it enters a battlefield, exile target non land permanent and opponent controls with mana value two or less until portable li hole leaves the battlefield. Um, Temple of the Dragon Queen. So uh, I'm sure you D and D players will know there is a D and D campaign called Horde of the Dragon Queen. So this is probably something based along those lines. It's a land card, very very cool art, um, and it's yeah very nice. Um, then we have Book of Exalted Deeds. This is a white mana card, um, legendary artifact. So it's a legendary card. You can see the color of the logo is different to the others. Um, it, and it only costs three white mana actually. 
and it says at the beginning of your of your end step if you gained three or more life this turn create a three three white angel creature token with flying pay three tap the card exile the book of exalted deeds put an enlightened counter on target angel it gains you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game activate only as a sorcery amazing and then you have manticore which is a black mana your holographic card with flash flying and tail spikes very nice so you have your land card and you have your dungeon card lovely next booster number four We have Valor Singer, a red mana creature to Tiefling Bard. Tieflings, again, more D&D &D style, um, which is that one. I'll put that here. We have a green mana creature token, Lizard Druid, and that's a green one. You have a, another sorcery, which is a black mana themed fates reversal and it's pretty cool return up to one target creature card from your graveyard to your hand venture into the dungeon so you use the dungeon cards that we discussed earlier very nice um and then we have dawnbringer cleric uh it's a white mana cleric card and that's that um then you have short cut seeker and whenever Shortcut Seeker deals combat damage to a player, venture into the dungeon. So just like before, you go into the dungeon. Um, then you have a red mana card, creature card, Dragon Warrior. It's pretty cool. Then Hobgoblin Captain is another red mana creature card. Then uh, we have a green mana creature card, Beast type, called Bullet. Um, at the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Bullet. Very nice. Um, then we have Leather Armor, so another artifact type card. Um, equipped creature gets plus 0 plus 1 and has Ward 1, and that means whenever equipped creature becomes the target of a spell or an ability an opponent controls, counter it unless the player plays 1 mana. So you can see very much there's lots of artifact cards that you would equip your creatures with, just like as you would your player in a D&D game. Uh, then you have um, find you find the villain's layer, which is interesting. I've never seen a card like that before. You either choose one, you foil their scheme and counter target spell, or learn their secrets. Draw two cards and then discard two cards. Very nice. Uh, then you have Blink Dog, which is a white mana creature. Double Strike and Teleport, which is a new um, ability, and you know, Blink Dog phases out and treats it as and anything attached to it as though they don't exist until the end your next turn. Then we have Grim Wanderer, Black Mana card creature, Goblin Warlock with Flash and Tragic Backstory. And then Eccentric Apprentice, which is a blue mana creature card. Tiefling Wizard. And then we have Eye of Vecna. Ah, now many of you might know the new Stranger Things season that's out and has something to do with this. I won't say much more. Legendary Artifact. Um, and then you get your Forest card and then you get your Token card. Fab. Booster number five. We have Contact Other Plane, which is a really cool instant, in which, again, you roll a d20 and you draw two cards if you get one to nine, numbers one to nine. If you get between 10 to 19 and you scry two, then draw two cards. Then if you get a d20, then you scry three and then draw three cards. That's that one. Brazen Dwarf is our creature card, red mana, and that's cool. 
And then you get Spoil of the Hunt, which is an instant for which is a green mana. And then you have Eye of the Beholder, which is another instant, but it has a really high mana cost of two black mana and four mana of any kind, in which target creature gets minus 11, minus 11 until end of turn. And the text at the bottom says, in the end, there was nothing beautiful to be seen. Wow. Uh, again, plus two mace, which we've already talked about. Um, Clever Conjurer, which is our gnome wizard with mage hand. For blue mana. Next is a green mana card, creature basilisk with death touch. Pretty cool. And then another one of a card that we saw earlier, which is our um, Goblin Javelinier, and um, which has haste, and whenever it becomes blocked, it deals one damage to target creature blocking it. It's a very cool art design card, yeah. Um, then you have Vampire Spawn, which is when the Vampire Spawn enters the battlefield, each opponent loses two life, and you gain two life. Very nice. This is a very interesting card. Look at the corner of this card, guys. It says, um, hang on, I don't know if you can see it. Dungeons and Dragons in the corner. Evolving Wilds. I've never seen a card like this before, ever, in which um, it says an adventure for character levels one to four, uh, and you sacrifice Evolving Wilds, and you search your library for a basic land card and put it into the battlefield tapped and shuffled. So that's amazing. I love it. Uh, 50 Feet of Rope is one of our other cards, um, which is an artifact card very D&D like. Um, Battle Cry Goblin is another red mana creature card. And then uh, you have a white mana instant card, Rally Maneuver. This is a cool artwork, it looks pretty cool. And yeah, that's a great card. Um, then you have Hive of the Eye Tyrant, which is a land card. And then you have your land card and dungeon card as we already spoke about. Cool. Number six. So the first one is a Gloom Stalker. It's a creature card, Dwarf Ranger. And it says, as long as you've completed the dungeon, Gloomstalker has double strike. Very nice. That one here. Um, then you have Scion of Stygia, or Stygia, um, which is a blue mana creature card. Then you have Army Veteran, which is our red mana creature card. Um, and as long as it's equipped with something, it has menace, which means it can't be blocked um, except by two or more creatures. Then you have Bull Strength, uh, a green instant card. So kind of like Giant Growth, really, if you guys remember that. Uh, then you have a Black Mana Enchantment card. Precipitous Drop, and where the creature is enchanted, and when, it en when this card enters the battlefield, venture into the dungeon. Uh, enchanted creature gets minus two, minus two. It gets minus five, minus five. Instead, as long as you've completed a dungeon. So, most of the activated abilities in some of, some of the cards are quite um, uh, good if you complete a dungeon. Delver's Touch is an equipment artifact card for white mana. And then you have your Fane Death black mana instant card. And then Baleful Beholder is one of our creature cards for black mana. And this one is quite interesting. It's also quite D&D like. Um, you can see how it's um, shooting out a beam from one of its eyes. 
you have Owl Bear, which is our green uh, mana creature card. Uh, it's a bird bear, so that's also, um, I don't know if, if you've seen the trailer for the D&D movie. Um, something similar to that in there as well. I won't say what, but um, yeah. It's quite cool. Um, veteran Dungeonia. Uh, when it comes into the battlefield, you go into a dungeon. You either go or advance into a dungeon. Um, you have, the next one is a Wandering Trovador, which is a green mana creature token. Um, yeah. Just there. Uh, sorry, green mana creature dragon bard. Apologies. Um, then you have a en blue enchantment aura, which is to enchant creature. An enchanted creature has flying, and whenever this creature deals damp combat damage to a player, venture into the dungeon. Um, purple worm is our next one, which is a green creature worm token. Very cool, very, very cool. And then we have our amazing, very much so d and card called Asmodeus the Archfiend, legendary creature, devil god. And it says it has binding contract, which means if you would draw a card, exile the top card of your library face down instead, so you don't know which card you're exiling, um, and then you pay three black mana, and you draw seven cards, uh, or pay one black mana, return all cards exiled with Asmodeus the Archfiend to their owner's hand, and you lose that much life. So, yeah, very nice. And you have your blue island um, card, land card, and dungeon card. Number seven. Grim Bounty, uh, which is a black sorcery card. Um, half Monk, which is our white creature, half elf, human elf monk. Um, then you have Secret Door, which is a defender type card, which we've seen before. Um, then we have Farida's Fireball, which is an instant in which the fireball deals five damage, target creature or planeswalker, uh, roll a d20, and then you follow the steps as we've seen before. Um, we, then we have um, Eltigard Ranger, our green human elf ranger to creature. Um, then we have Zombie Ogre, which is one of our um, black Zombie Ogre cards, creature cards. Uh, dire Wolf Prowler is our green cre wolf creature token. Card, sorry. Uh, then we have uh, Clattering Skeletons, which is a skeleton creature card. And when it dies, you go into a dungeon. Um, then we have another cool looking card, a Mimic, which we all know about from our D&D &D adventures. Um, and it says, sacrifice Mimic, add one mana of any colour. Uh, or pay two, becomes a shapeshifter artifact creature with base power and toughness of three, three until end of turn. So yeah, very nice. I love these type of cards. It's very um, retro vibes. Uh, you hear something on the watch. So it sounds like when you read these titles, it sounds like you're actually telling the story or progressing the story on a bit like D&D, &D, which is an instant card. Uh, then you have Shisera Death Whisperer, which is a green and black creature card token, legendary creature actually, and um, artwork's amazing as usual, very beautiful. And then we have Skullport Merchant, which is a black Dwarf Citizen creature card. Um, 
then we have Engineer Smith, which is a human artificer. So a lot of you guys probably know artificer classes in D&D. &D. Um, then we have Vorpal's, Vorpal's Sword, which is an artifact equipment card, gold, so rare. Um, creature gets plus two, plus zero, and has death touch, or five mana of any kind and three black mana. Until end of turn, Vorpal's Sword gains whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player and that player loses the game. Wow. So you can see that for yourself. Amazing. Forest card and your dungeon card. And that's number seven. Um, number eight. We have Find the Path. And this one is a green enchantment card. And then we have Spurk. Sepulchre Ghost Ghoul, which we have already seen before, our black creature zombie card. Uh, then we have Devoted Paladin, and uh, that's an Orc Knight, and it's a white creature card with Beacon of Hope as its activated ability. Uh, Mordenkainen's Polymorph, very much D&D style. Uh, it is um, target creature becomes a dragon with base power and toughness of 4-4 four, four and gains flying. Amazing. Then we have Unexpected Windfall, which is an instant. Looks very cool. Very, very cool. And then Ranger's Longbow, which is um, an artifact card again. And Rhyme Shield Frost Giant, which we've already seen. And then we have Spare Dagger, which is an artifact card, equipment card. And then we have another You See a Guard Approach instant card there. And then the next one is a Red Sorcery uh, called Kick in the Door. And then we have Divine Smite, which we've already seen, I think. And then we have Burning Hands, which is one of our spells in D&D &D as well. Uh, Burning Hands deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker. And if that permanent is green, Burning Hands deals six damage instead. Whoa, pretty cool. And then another cool card, um, Farida, Devil's Chosen, Tiefling Warlock, and she has Dark One's own luck, and whenever you roll one or more dice, Farida, Devil's Chosen gains flying and menace until end of turn. If any of those results was 10 or higher, draw a card. Very nice. Fighter class. Um, the classes of DNA, uh, D and D, and which you have um, different levels to activate their abilities. A mountain and a Guinevere card. Number nine. We have. Army Veteran, so, and then we have um, Elder Guards Ranger, which we've already seen before, a green human elf ranger. Then we have um, a black cre tiefling rogue creature card called Horde Robber, which is pretty cool. Horde Robber is deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token. Then we have Dawnbringer Cleric, which is a white creature human cleric card. And it's you can choose one of the following cure wounds. You gain two life, um, dispel magic, 
um, you destroy target enchantment and gentle repose exile target card from a graveyard. And then you have Soul Knife Spy, which is a blue elf rogue creature card. And um, Swarming Goblins is a red creature goblin card with the um, roller d20 instruction. And then we have um, Null Hunter, which is a null creature card. And then you have You're Ambushed on the Road. So you either choose to make a retreat or send and fight. Interesting. And then we have a Arborea Pegasus, which is a very cool card. And then we have Ranger's Hawk, which is a creature bird token. That's that one. And then we have our cool looking cards again, which is Brunoa Battlehammer, which is a legendary creature, dwarf warrior, and each creature you control gets plus two, plus zero for each equipment attached to it. And you may pay zero rather than pay the equipment cost of the first equip ability you activate each turn. And it's got plus, it's got five and three health and defense. And then we have um, plate armor, artifact equipment. And then we have black dragon, very cool, with acid breath. And when black dragon it enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent controls gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. Then we have um, Eliwick Tumblestrom, which is a legendary Planeswalker Eliwick, and you activate their abilities according to Planeswalker rules. So that's Eliwick. And then you have your land card and dungeon card. Last one. The last booster. So the first one here in the tenth booster is Swarming Goblins, and this is a red creature card. Then we have Inspiring Bard. So your bard classes in D and D, uh, and it's a creature card. And then you have a Shambling Ghast, which is a black zombie creature card. And then you have your Dwarf Hold Champion, which is a white dwarf warrior creature card. And then you have Charmed Sleep. So you enchant the creature and you tap the creature and doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. Very nice. Then we have Great Axe, which is an artifact card and um, equipped creature gets plus four plus zero and its equip cost is five mana. Then you have um, Underdark's Basilisk with Death Touch. And then you have the Manticore, which is a black Manticore creature with flash and flying which we've seen before. And then we have the Vampire Spawn card, which we've also seen before. And then we have a uh, Black Drider card, Elf Spider creature card with Reach. And whenever Drider deals combat damage to a player, create two one Black Spider creature token with Menace and Reach. Then we have Feywild Trickster. And that one is a Gnome Warlock creature card. And then we have White Dragon. And this one is flying with cold breath. When White Dragon enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. 
Wow. Frozen. And then our typical D&D card, which is very cool, which is follow guide to monsters. And this is a green blue card. Legendary creature, human wizard. Whenever you cast a creature spell that doesn't share a creature type with a creature you control or a creature card in your graveyard, copy that spell. Which is really cool. And then we have Swarming Goblins as our holographic shiny card. It is a creature goblin card and um, it has our roll 20 instructions on it in which you have to follow to gain its respective abilities. Have our land card and a token card. So yeah. And that's all the boosters guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and let me know what's your favorite Magic the Gathering card, be it from this set or from any other set in the past. And yeah, take care, bye.